On this island near Shanghai, a massive industrial expansion is underway. About two decades ago, the island looked like this. Now, it's a shipbuilding powerhouse. That single shipyard has more shipbuilding capacity than the entire U.S. naval shipbuilding industry. In 2023, more than half of the world's commercial shipbuilding came from China alone. The U.S. accounted for less than 1% of that. Here's how China became the world's shipyard and what that could mean for the U.S. in a protracted war. At San Diego's Nazco shipyard, thousands of workers clock in each day to fill orders fueled by the largest naval shipbuilding budget in decades. Despite the increase in spending, $32 billion in 2023 alone, the country's once thriving shipbuilding industry has dwindled. At the same time, China's shipbuilding footprint is expanding dramatically. China has over 200 times the shipbuilding capacity of the U.S. As a senior fellow at the Center for Strategic and International Studies in Washington, D.C., Matthew Faneole analyzes China's shipbuilding strategies and naval growth. You can see the deep green hull and you can see the evergreen written right there. Its shipbuilding empire has grown in lockstep as its economy has been able to grow and expand. We're talking about over $100 billion being injected into the shipbuilding industry. China leveraged all that capital to build up the world's largest navy by hull count. In 2023, the U.S. Department of Defense reported China had over 370 Battle Force ships. That's about 78 more than the U.S. By 2030, China expects to reach 435 ships, while the U.S. fleet is projected to stay the same size or get smaller. We have less ships, but they're bigger. We also have an advantage when you look at just the amount of missiles that our ships are able to carry and to launch. So larger ships, more firepower. The U.S. has more active aircraft carriers, too. 11 compared to China's two. This means the U.S. Navy can more easily project power in multiple areas and launch attacks over vast distances. But China is catching up. Recent satellite imagery analyzed by CSIS shows significant progress on China's third aircraft carrier and other key naval vessels. It's unlikely that China will have the same number of aircraft carriers as the U.S. just because it doesn't have the same global footprint or the desire for the same global footprint, but it is trying to erode the technological advantage that the U.S. enjoys. All of this naval growth is possible because of China's colossal shipyards, like this one at Changxing Island. Satellite imagery shows dozens of ships under construction at Jiangnan Shipyard. It's not just the size of the facilities, it also produces them quickly. Part of that is the, the repetition of the process. It hasn't always been this way. For decades, the U.S. dominated the international shipbuilding industry, reaching its peak in World War II. The mightiest battleship ever built, the USS Iowa. But by the 1980s, the subsidies that had been keeping that industry afloat went away during the Reagan administration. The U.S. shipbuilding industry gradually dwindled away. Meanwhile, countries like Japan, South Korea, and China continued to heavily subsidize their own yards. If you look at Chinese shipyards, what you see is an effort for China to make the facilities dual use. The dry docks, the assembly halls, the fabrication facilities, producing commercial vessels, those are also being used and leveraged to produce military vessels. In 2023, China dominated the commercial shipbuilding industry, producing more than Japan, South Korea, and Europe combined. U.S. commercial shipbuilding industry has essentially gone away to where there is no significant U.S. shipbuilding in an international scale. At most U.S. shipping yards, the vast majority of contracts come from one big customer, the Navy. Without a commercial shipbuilding industry to lean on, the nation's shipyards, workers, and suppliers are reliant on naval budgets and priorities. If you're counting on a single customer who it's hard to tell sometimes what they're going to do next, certainly is going to cause issues for you in terms of having confidence in making investments and training for and paying new workers. In a statement, a Navy spokesperson said that it is collaborating closely with industry partners to achieve the necessary speed and scale to deliver continuous warfighting advantage. Some U.S. shipyards are battling backlogs, a lack of suppliers, and ballooning costs. For instance, Pennsylvania's Philly shipyard is still struggling to make money, despite more than $1.7 billion in order backlogs. In 2023, it reported a net loss of more than $67 million. Philly shipyard did not respond to a request for comment. Shipbuilding experts say the U.S. Navy has a twofold problem. Too many of its ships are past their prime, which requires costly and time-consuming repairs. And new ships are increasingly expensive and taking too long to build. In April, the Navy released a report that revealed delays for many critical shipbuilding programs, with some running behind by as much as three years. 
Doing maintenance on ships that are 10, 20, 30 years old can be quite challenging. In some cases, and certainly for ships that were built during the Cold War, repair parts suppliers may have gone out of business. In China, billion dollar contracts are pouring in for not only war fighting ships, but also container ships, oil tankers, and bulk carriers for foreign shipping lines. And just one Chinese company, CSSC, which is state owned, is actually one of the biggest players globally in commercial ship production. CSSC is massive and it has hundreds and hundreds of subsidiaries. So a shipyard will get an order for say, five surface combatants, but they are getting orders from foreign companies as well. Last year, French shipping giant CMA CGM signed a $3 billion deal with CSSC for 16 container ships. Taiwanese company Evergreen Marine sends large contracts its way too. The commercial and military overlap can be seen most clearly at Jiangnan Shipyard. Commercial container ships, like these Evergreen vessels, are built alongside wartime vessels for China's navy. This merging of resources is key to China's ability to build big ships and build them fast. If you just look at military vessels over a two, three year period, you'd see from the United States maybe putting two or three ships into the water each year. Whereas for China, we're talking about 20, 25, 30 ships. China's shipbuilding dominance is a sign of its transformation into a major maritime power, but it's also a pivotal strategic asset. In the event of a drawn out conflict over Taiwan, for instance, naval experts say China's shipyards would give its military an upper hand. That's because it would be able to quickly replace lost ships and repair damaged ones. But naval experts say the U.S. might be slow to ramp up shipping facilities mid-war. If you're only producing a handful of military hulls every year, when you're losing X number of vessels at any given time in a particular battle, how are you going to rebuild that fleet quickly? In a statement, a Navy spokesperson said, we are addressing delays, enhancing the workforce, and ensuring our fleet remains the most capable in the world. That's why the U.S. is investing heavily in shipbuilding and maintenance. In the past eight years, Congress has added an extra $24 billion to build warships, more than any other part of the Pentagon budget. They're looking for funding for billions and billions of dollars of what's necessary to upgrade many of the older facilities and improve the facilities that we have to try to catch up on that maintenance. Chinese submarines are several generations behind what the U.S. is able to put into the water. In just terms of raw capabilities, the U.S. still has a pretty significant advantage, but it is shrinking. Despite these U.S. advantages, naval strategists say China's fleet size will ultimately give it leverage in a drawn-out conflict. The more ships, the better. To ramp up shipbuilding and maintenance efforts, the U.S. Navy has proposed three different versions of a 30-year plan, but all of them require an even bigger naval budget, from $245 billion to as much as $330 billion by 2053. If the U.S. did want to ramp up its ability to produce both commercial vessels and naval vessels, the question might lie outside of the United States itself. We might want to look to our allies and partners like Japan and South Korea that are leading producers of commercial ships, and they also do produce military vessels as well.